I'm Erin McHale, founder of FemaleFightFans.com, and I just showed you how to throw a jab and also some different variations on the jab. And now I'm going to take you through um, the other five punches. Our hands are up, we're in our fight stance, and um, our right hand or left hand, um, and I'm going to call it a right hand for the simplicity of this video. Some people call it a cross. Some people call it um, like a straight punch. Um, it, it, it really doesn't matter what you call it. It's just essentially a power punch from your dominant side. Just think a right hand is a lot more simplistic and sounds like badass in a way. So that's what I call it, but you can call it whatever you want. If our hands are up, what you want to do when you're throwing a right hand is take your shoulder is back here, right? So you want to be taking your shoulder and moving all the way through and throwing that right hand and you want to be turning your knuckles when you do it so you want to be throwing your hand like throwing your um, arm excuse me your arm forward and through all the way from the back to the front so you're moving your shoulder all the way from being back here to being up here see that and then you're taking your hand and actually driving it through so again turning the knuckles and that's really where all of the power comes from is when you turn and if you even think about a turning motion it's it's putting all your weight behind this shot so I'm not just throwing my punch like this I'm putting all my body all my weight behind it so that when it's landing you're getting all that weight and so there's a lot more momentum behind this punch and it's a lot more powerful as a result. Um, so I'll show you two of my leg. If you watch my right leg, it's actually turning and my foot is actually turning forward. And I'll put the, I'll angle it down so I can show you actually from my feet what is happening. I'm trying the right hand. So my feet are like this and then I'm actually turning my foot See how I'm turning my leg and my foot all the way through when I'm throwing that right hand. So my knuckles are turning when my foot is turning. You want it to all be one fluid motion. And I'll kind of angle the camera out a little bit so you can see and watch. See how you throw that right hand, turn those knuckles over, turn them, and turn that hip and that leg. So really, like that's a full right hand right there. And then always bringing it back to your chin right after and aiming for your nose so the only real variation on a straight right hand is an overhand right which essentially just means that you're um, throwing your hand in an overarching motion overhand versus just like straight out right so it's a sweeping punch it goes down and the momentum and the power is going downwards in a downward motion instead of like straight. So, um, which is why it's an overhand versus just a straight right hand. Um, it's actually a great punch if you're shorter. So I'm a very short fighter. So like for me, it's a good thing to throw um, because of the downward motion. So if you're facing somebody that's taller, it kind of allows you to like sweep upwards, if that makes sense, because you're going overhand. So you're going like above yourself essentially um above your own height and then um you're doing that same thing with the turning of the knuckles and going over the top so it's like going over the, the I, that's how i think of it is like you want to land over the top so if if both of you are like kind of down here a little bit and like let's say the person you're facing is taller i want to be going over the top of myself so I can land on their face. Hook is kind of what it sounds like. It, it looks like a hook. So um, it's a short punch. The, the main problem with hooks is that it's very easy to get sloppy with them and to um, sort of like slap your opponent or if you're working on a bag to like slap the bag with your fist instead of like driving it through. You always want to be driving it through, not slapping. 
because this, this is just not powerful. Doing a sloppy hook, you're leaving your whole body open then to be countered. And this is really easy to telegraph, right? Like it's really easy to see that coming. So you want to make sure when you're throwing your hook that you're very precise and um, short. You want to throw shorter hooks. So what I mean by that is you want to actually take your fist and so I'm going to start on the left side. Um, typically also, um, if you're a orthodox fighter, you're going to be throwing hooks more from the left side. And that it's just a whole, um, essentially how, how the movement and how, and what openings are really available. Um, the most often you're going to find left hooks a lot more available as an orthodox fighter versus your right hook. It doesn't mean you're never going to throw a right hook because you are, but it just means that more often you're going to be throwing the left hook. You're going to sort of like turn yourself a little bit over. You know, I lifted my elbow a little bit, but that actually you're not so, you should not do that. You shouldn't like lift your elbow out again because that's a telegraph. You can see what's coming, right? So you don't want to be lifting your arm up and out. Instead, you want to turn yourself a little bit and then take your fist up and through. So you want to go up and then like drive it straight through. So then, you know, your arm is making a hook, right? And nice and short nice and short so that you're not leaving yourself open and also if you're seeing what my leg is doing so my left leg is turning with me so it's giving me all that power in my hip is going into this shot instead of just my arm it's the same thing with all the punches instead of just my arm doing this right like that that it's not that, that has nothing but it's so much more putting all your weight when you're turning into it and you're putting all your hip into it. That was a little bit sloppy. <laughs> but yeah, see, it's really easy too. The biggest thing, I think it's very easy to get sloppy with your hooks and to, you know, just go totally up, just start slapping. Like, you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you're staying composed and keeping it nice and short. Seen it both ways. In terms of your fist, I've seen some people actually do it this way where their knuckles are facing this direction. It would be like parallel to the floor. So parallel like this, where your knuckles are facing forward. And then I've seen other people throw it, I see it more commonly too, thrown this way, where your knuckles are facing um, perpendicular to the floor instead of parallel. So it's like this versus this. Honestly, you can do it either way. I think this a little bit easier and gives you a little bit more control because this just I think when you're doing it this way you just have to be a little bit more precise and it's just easier to kind of um, just turn into that it's a little bit more natural but really either way is fine but now I'm gonna do it on the right side it's, it's no different same thing just on the right instead of the left it takes a lot of practice to really get it to where you're not sort of like slapping and you're just being quick, you're turning into it and you're coming right back. And it takes a lot of effort too in terms of if you're really doing it right, you're really driving it through and you're using all your body weight, it takes a lot of effort to throw that. The more effort it takes, the more power it's gonna have behind it. That's pretty much universal. So these are your hooks then, and now we're going to go into uppercuts. So uppercuts are designed really to uh, get right at somebody's chin. Um, so you're going to be driving your fist all the way through. It definitely requires a setup. You don't just want to be like throwing uppercuts just to throw an uppercut. If there's no opening for somebody's chin, if nothing's exposed, you can also throw it to the body too, um, which really can like knock the wind out of somebody. But Unless there's an opening for that, it's not something you just want to be throwing just to throw it. Um, because if, if it has nothing to land on, if there's no chin to land on, it's not going to do anything. Because just by merit of the motion being an upward motion, you have to have something for your knuckles to land on up here, right? If there's no chin, if there's nothing to land on, it doesn't mean anything. Probably, I think, the hardest punch to master because... Um, it requires such a 
high amount of distance management. You really have to understand how close or how far away somebody is in order to hit them with an uppercut and have it land. And usually you have to be inside. Like so that's the whole thing with you know setting up the jab and then being inside to where you can throw an uppercut and they're actually there for you to hit. And especially if their hands are down, um, you know, it, it leaves a perfect opportunity for you to capitalize on that. I see people doing it like a bowling ball where it's like, and that's not what you want to be doing. This is totally leaving you open. This is doing nothing. I can totally see this coming, right? Like, I mean, look how ridiculous it looks. But people throw uppercuts like that all the time. You want to make sure that uppercut is nice and short, and the shorter it is too, the more powerful it is. This it looks powerful maybe, but it's not really because all the momentum is kind of just going up and out. It's not actually going through the punch. We need it to go through. So like when it's short like this, there's power there. That's gonna hurt if it lands, and that's what we want. The thing I see people doing, especially women, is just arm punches. We're not doing arm punches. We're doing real punches. So turning and you see I'm taking my fist is facing up um, or my I should say my knuckles are facing upwards facing towards the ceiling and then I'm taking my I'm turning a little bit turning and then throwing it upward. So nice and short nothing again nothing like that. We want it to be nice and short straight up and throwing it upwards and it's the same and I'm showing you right and left it's the same on both sides you want to turn and throw turn and throw turn and throw turn and throw nice and short we want it to be <coughs> the person's chin is right here so that's how you throw an uppercut those are the other five punches um, I've covered all six though, um, and seven I guess if you count the overhand right variation. Those things where it sounds really easy and it's like, oh, it's just six punches. To really master it, it takes years of work and dedication and practice and repetition. You know, because I've been boxing for, like really boxing for close to a year and I'm not anywhere close to even where I want to be in terms of, um, being able to throw these punches with, you know, the most power, the most efficiency, um, putting all my weight into it. It's, there's so many little things that you wouldn't think would make a big difference that actually do. And those are the differences between like landing a shot and actually doing some damage and not. You know, if you're an inch away from landing a punch, you're an inch away from landing a punch. You didn't actually land it. It doesn't matter if I'm an inch away or even an eighth of an inch away because it didn't land. I was an eighth of an inch off and I didn't land the punch as a result. I don't know why I went on like this whole rampage afterward, but just, I know I feel like it sounds easy. It looks easy, but, um, it, it, I wanted to show you really all the technique that goes into it because you have to think about everything. You have to think about your feet, your legs, your shoulders, your, um, elbows. You have to think about everything the full package when you're throwing these shots, not just your arms um, or your hands. So I hope you enjoyed this. Tell me if you did, give me a thumbs up if so, um, and tell me what else you wanna see, what other tutorials um, you would like to see from me. If you wanna um, see some combinations, if you want me to do um, some footwork drills or explanations, um, whatever you would like to learn, I'm happy to teach it to you. So. Um, thanks so much for watching and uh, I'll see you soon.